My name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the T's. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the study manual for the T's. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problems that we are about to solve are the ones that you will find on page number 259. Please turn to it, page number 259, and today is our lesson number 68. The very first problem on page number 259 has to do with the percentage change. We are told, has to do with percentage change. We are told that the enrollment at, at a college went up from 625 to 710. Number 20, we are told that the enrollment has gone up from 625 to 710. This problem has to do with percentage change formula. The question here is what's the percentage change? And if you recall, we learned the percentage change formula. Percentage change formula. We learned it, if you recall, on day number 14. And if you have not watched these videos in the proper sequence, it's important that you watch the videos from day 1 through 60. Day 1 through 60 is all where we learn all the concepts, all the material that we need to learn before you do the practice exam. Day 1 through 60 from page 50 through 110. On day 14 we learn what is known as percentage change, percentage change formula, which goes something like this. We know the percentage change has to equal the change divided by the old number, the number that we started out with, sometimes sometimes referred to as old number, some people refer to as initial number, initial quantity, starting number, whatever you want to call it, times 100. We have to do times 100 because if we just check, because otherwise if we just take the ratio of the change divided by the initial number, what we'll end up here is a fraction. Well, we may end up with something like 0.75, but 0.75 is 75%. And the way we convert the 0.75 fraction into a de a decimal into a percentage is by multiplying this quantity by 100. So that's it. That's what we have here. And the change is defined as our new number minus the old. New minus the old times the old divided by the old times 100. The new number here, the new number here is 710 minus the old number which is 625 divided by the old number 625 times 100. This is the answer. We just have to simplify this, but this is the answer. This, this is what we have to work with. We're going we're gonna to simplify this thing up here. So anyway, one more time, the, the formula for percentage change is this one, and it was covered on day number 14. So we're going to work with this quantity here. How much is, how much is 610 uh, how much is 710 minus 625? Well, I know 700 minus 625. I know it's going to be would have been 75. 700 minus 625 would have been 75 because it is 710. It's going to be 85. 85 over 625 times 100. Now, if you were to divide top and bottom by 5, this will turn into a, a very miserable way of going around it because it's, it's going to get quite cumbersome. This is 100. 100 we know is a multiple of 25. 4 25s are 100. What about 625? This is where you have to know your squares. Know your squares. Something, something that we covered on day number 2. Day two, know your squares. And if we know your square, if we if we, if we had known our squares, we would have recognized right away that 625 is 25 times 25. 25 square is 6, 625. You have to know your basic squares. So let's divide top and bottom by 25. 100, the 100 has 425. And if you don't know your squares, it's very simple. Listen, if you don't know your squares, it's very simple. We try to divide 625 by 20. We divide, try to divide 625 by 25. How many 25s in 100? 100 has 425. If 100 has 425, then 600, then 600 must have 
6 times 4, which is 24. And then we have other 25. So it's 25. One more way you could have we could have divided 625 by 25 is ask ourselves 625 over 25. How many 25 and 62? 62 has 225. The remaining 12, you see 225s are 50. The remaining 12 from the 62 goes and joins this 5 and becomes 125. And 125 has 5 25s. You see? So 625 divided by 25 is 25. But it should not have turned into all of this discussion. You have to know your squares. You have to know your squares. So that's it. So we and and then we end up and now we can divide. So now we have 85 divided by 25. And now, if you like, you can divide top and bottom by five because obviously we can't do anything with four. So how many how many fives in 85? How many fives in 85? It's very simple. How many fives in eight? Eight has only one five. Eight has only one five. The remaining three goes and joins the. 5 becomes 35s. And how many 5s in a 35? 7 5s are 35. 7 5s are 35. So 85 divided by 5 is going to give us 17 and 25 becomes 5. That's it, we are almost done. So we have 17 times 4. 17 times 4 is how much? 17 times 17 times 4 is how much? Well, how the hell do I know? I know 15 times 4. I know 15 times 4 is 60. That I do know. And therefore 17 times 4 should be 8 more because we have 4, four twos to go. 15 times 4 and 2 times 4. Break up 17 into 15 and 2. So 68. 68 over 5. 68 over 5. We are almost done. 68 over 5. I, I really need the room. I need to erase those. Things. We need the room. So what we end up is 68 over 5, which can be written as which can be written as 65 over 5 plus 3 over 5. And how many how many 5 is in 65? Well let's find out, shall we? How many 5s in a 6? 6 has 1 5. The remaining one goes and joins the 5, becomes 15. And how many 5s in a 15? 15 has 3 5s. In other words, 65 divided by 5 is 13. So we have 13 and 3 fifths. 13 and 3 fifths. 68 over 5 is 13 and 3 fifths, which can be written as, which can be written as, now remember this is a percentage because we multiplied it by 100. 13 and 3 fifths, and how much is 3 fifths? You must know your, you must know your fifths you must know your fifths something that we did something that we did on day number 8 and day number 9 3 fifths is 0.6 percent that's it that's our final answer 0.6% that's all there was okay simple as that straightforward so one more time here's what we did one more time so we had the change was 85 because 700 minus 625 would have been 75 therefore 710 minus 625 we figured out was 85 it's 85 divided by the old number the number that we started out with which was 625 times 100 and we are able to see immediately that 625 is a multiple of 25 and 100 is a multiple of 25 it's much easier to divide by 25 it saves a, it saves a lot of time instead of dividing top and bottom by 5 so we did that, 625 is made up of 25 25s. 25 25s are 625. In other words, 25 squared is 625. 25 times 25 is 625. So when we divide 625 by 25, we end up with 25 here. And when we divide 100 by 25, we end up with 4. Then we divide top and bottom by 5. 25 divided by 5 is just 5. And 85 divided by 5, we find out was 17. So on the top, we have 17 times 4 which we found out was 68 because 15 times 4 is 60 and then 2 times 4 would be 8. 68 over 5, 68 over 5 can be written as 65 over 5 plus 3 over 5. 65 divided by 5 we found out was 13, 13 and 3 fifths, 13 and 3 fifths percentage but we do not have answer choice expresses this way. We have to convert this 3 fifths into decimal and we know our fifths, we know 3 fifths is 0.6. We know our decimals because we learned we, you must know we learned our tenths, our fifths, our quarters, 
our eighths, our thirds, and our sixths. We learn all of those concepts on day eight and nine. So there is a lot of things going on here. We have to know from this from day number two, the squares, your fifths and the, uh, and, and the tenths from day eight and nine, and you have to know the actual formula that to use, which we learned on day number 14. But anyway, that's what it is. Final answer is 13.6. I'll get out of your way so you have unobstructed view for a second before we do the next one. All right, next one. Listen, before I actually do the next one, I have this urge to redo the problem because I, I, I was explaining too much. Let's do one more time without too much explanation just so you can see it here. So percentage change, percentage change is new minus the old over the old times 100. It's that simple. And the new number was 710, old number was 625 over 625 times 100. 710 minus 625 is 85 over 625 times 100. Divide top and bottom by 25, 100 divided by 25 is 4, 625 divided by 25 is 25, and then divide top and bottom by 5. 25 becomes 5, and 8 has 1 5, the remaining 3 goes and joins the 5, becomes 35, that gives us 35 has 7 5s. 17 times 4, 17 times 4, we found out was 68 over 5. And 68 over 5 can be written as 65 over 5 plus 3 over 5. And 65 over 5 is just 13. So it's 13 and 3 fifths percent, which is same as 13 and 13.6 percent. So if you know your concept, if you mastered your uh, material, this, this question should not take actually that long to actually arrive at the final answer. Do you understand? Let's do the next one. Because that's the whole point, you have to be able to do these problems without the calculator. I understand that, it's very annoying because we are so used to using our calculators in our everyday lives, including myself, we reach for the calculator instinctively. But in this exam, of course, we, we have to do it manually. Number 21. In number 21, we have a chemist who wants to measure, wants to measure 2.3 milliliter. I do not know why I'm writing everything on the blackboard because you will see in a second uh, why I say why I made that remark here. The question is which tool, which measurement tool to use? That's the question here. I, as I said, I do not know why I'm writing all this thing on the blackboard because these are the answer choices. Beaker, this, this tool, I am not even going to bother to pronounce it because I probably will mispronounce it, but if I had to, I would probably say pipette, I don't know, I have no idea, I probably mispronounced it. Measuring cup, that is another an alien concept for me, and we had this discussion a little while ago in other videos where they were talking about cup, and I had no, never known that cup is considered a standard measure of uh, measurement, a unit of measurement in the US. That's insane. Because when I was looking at the previous problem, I don't know where it was. As I said, I went to my kitchen, I look in the cabinet, there are several different kind of cups. There is no, I don't know how a cup can be a standard unit of measurement. So I have no idea what that means. I don't know what the pipette is. Beaker at one time I did know for, for years and years ago, many, many moons ago when I was a young boy in the chemistry course in the high school that I, I, I know I remember came across a beaker, but I have no idea what it is anymore. And graduated, graduated cylinder. I was never even informed or nobody even bothered to send me an email to inform me that the cylinder actually did graduate. I have no idea what graduated cylinder is. I'm being facetious, you understand? I don't understand what they mean by graduate. Apparently there are some gradation in some kind of cylinder. I have no idea what kind of cylinder they're talking about. So I don't know what the answer is. Yes, you're welcome. Yes, that is about as much help you're going to get out of me in this one. I don't know what it is, what's going on here. You deal with it. 
but I am very touched that the cylinder did manage to graduate. Number 22. We have a scale on the map. Number 22 is very silly. We are told we are told that on the map one centimeter represents 10 miles and the question simply is how much would 8 centimeter represent? Is that what it is? Number 22. I just want to double check. It can be as simple as that. The scale on the map uh, indicates that every one centimeter on the map equals 10 miles. The desired distance on the map measures 8 centimeter. 8 centimeter would be how much? Well 8 centimeter would be 8 times as much. What the hell? Why the fuss? If 1 centimeter is 10 miles, 8 centimeter will be 8 times as much and hence the 80 miles. A distance of 8 centimeter on the map will represent actual distance of 80 miles. That's all. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.